Hey everyone, so I wanted to start this video out by saying I love these units. I, I know I did uh, mention in the other one that I wish I had the newer ones, but that is purely because of the, the voltage limit for the panels being increased. So your total voltage limit increased in the newer ones. Um, so that I would have liked only because it would have made uh, setting up the panels a little bit easier, but um, I, I love the units. They do a fantastic job. They're running uh, usually around, at the max, 8,000 watts. Anywhere from lights, incubators, hot water heater, uh, which is a hybrid. So the uh, I wouldn't probably attempt it with the standard hot water heater, but uh, with the uh, heat pump option, it only seems to pull around uh, 600 watts, so that uh, makes it, um, to me, a better option than using gas, if you're talking about off-grid or the grid being down. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to run through some of what I've done here as far as the AC part of the system, and maybe some of the DC, but um, I covered in another video that I have uh, around 30 kilowatt hours of batteries um, and then as far as what I did when I uh, so originally I did have a panel coming from the main house the main in the house that panel uh, at a nice heavy gauge uh, aluminum direct burial and what I've done is I've actually made that part of the return trip so uh, I ran, um, I put a new critical loads panel in at the house. Uh, I had a small generator panel and so I ran a, a larger panel. And uh, at that point I ran the shop power to that for the return trip. And I ran a new double pole 60 amp from the house and uh, shared neutral and shared ground as specified in the manual for the LV6548s. So, and this is how I've done it. You know, I, I see a lot of people say I'm not an electrician and I am not an electrician. And so there must be a reason they all say that. <laughs> but uh, some kind of disclaimer or something, but this is how I've done it. Um, it has worked really well. I don't have any uh, issues, but so uh, they are spliced here in uh, three ways so uh, you've got the inlet neutral and uh, that would essentially Y off or key off into these and same with the ground and then the hot leg for each and so those three ground neutral and leg feed into each inverter in their inlet side for bypass and with the battery bank I have I, 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 I mean, I use it without any, I am not uh, frugal uh, with the power. So in the event of a, a grid outage or a storm uh, outage, then I would definitely be more careful. But with the way that I use it, um, we'll get two days if it's really cloudy or nasty, and then the bypass will kick over. Uh, and I've got that voltage set at 50 volts now there's a i can get into that later maybe but so at around 50 it will switch back to grid and at 54 then it'll switch back to battery so that's how i have my settings currently and uh they will probably change at some point so anyway the outlet so the inverters outlet to the house uh would be these um and this might be boring some of you that already uh, are aware of all this, but I'm just trying to cover what I've done. Um, four gauge as well. So uh, some people have an issue with four gauge fitting in the terminal. I think everyone does <laughs> if they wire these, but they are not easy to get a four gauge wire in. But there's a reason behind that um, as far as the four gauge. So there's a couple different things in my opinion. Uh, it needs the four gauge for max wattage. But then you also have the uh, the surge to consider too for as far as the uh, the inverter side of things. 
or the bypass, the four gauge, you need to be able to charge. For some people, I do not charge with the grid, but charge the batteries and run the 13,000 watts. Um, so there's a reason why they specify four gauge. So if you don't plan on using these units to their maximum capability, I, I guess six, but I, I don't like that. I, to me, I would rather put uh, what they specify and the largest gauge they can fit in the thing. So it's a bit of a pain, but um, after a while you, you can get them in there and um, they do fit in a three quarter flexible. So uh, at that point, the four gauge wire, I ran them into this 100 amp disconnect. I did not need this technically. Uh, it's a bit of a redundancy. I, the, the breaker that I run it into, a, a double 60 here, um, would be sufficient to just shut it off and isolate the system. But I, I like the idea of that and being able to isolate it uh, with a large manual uh, switch. And uh, you know, if anything needs to be worked on, I can throw that switch and the way that I have it wired uh, with the pass-through switch at the house from the main to the uh, critical loads panel, I can feed this panel back from the house uh, in the event I don't have these inverters. So it's, a, it's an easy option for me. It just takes throwing a few breakers and switches uh, just in case. And so the, and I can get into the inside uh, wiring I did maybe in another video, but critical loads panel, in my opinion, is one of the easier parts of the wiring. And if it's done in a correct way, you can uh, decide which breakers you'd like to uh, switch around and, and just test the system, see if it's working for you. And uh, I do not have AC running on it, heat running on it. Um, you know, with some mini splits, it would be nice. I am going to be putting a mini split in the shop here just to regulate some of the temperature, just to cut off some of the edge. So for hot and cold, I, I really don't need to uh, run it all the time, but I'll just set it for the higher and lower limits. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's how I have the AC side of things wired. There is a few ways you can do this and you can even mix and match with some of the um, the 240 uh, MVP units also. Um, there's lots of different ideas on how to do that. This was the simplest and uh, it's expandable. Uh, so it's the simplest option for me and it's expandable. So uh, at any point I could, I could actually increase another two, two inverters. And uh, now as far as the DC side, I may wait for the next video on that. You know, I, I assume when I'm making some of these that people kind of um, you know, I mentioned VOC in the last one, the uh, voltage open circuit. Uh, and I just assume people uh, kind of know what that is. But, you know, if you're coming into this new, there's a lot of different terms that people may use that you don't uh, understand right away. And so, and that's definitely the way I was just a few months ago. So, um, in the next video, I may get into the DC side and then I'll uh, go into what I did at the house to show you the critical loads panel and uh, maybe get into more of what I did even in this one as far as uh, how I wired that and where I ran my grounds and neutrals. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to cover that in this one and then I will uh, in the next two videos try to cover that section and then possibly show you where I'm going to be putting the new array also. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.